Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, time for another Metal Earth kit build, diving back into the Star Wars universe. I've got something that can be a little bit tougher to get a hold of. I have the Land Speeder, the original Land Speeder from the original trilogy, or I should say the original first Star Wars movie. This is not available in most any stores. It is available at the Disney Park stores. You can order it online. Sometimes it can be a little tough to find. They're a bit more expensive than usual Star Wars kits. And sometimes you maybe could find it on eBay or some reseller. But I've got one. Been wanting one. Let's put together the land speeder. It's two sheets. Don't know how hard it is. Let's open it up and find out. The first of our Disney exclusive kits, the land speeder. If we open this up, I imagine it'll be very similar to our usual kits. And we have two instructions, two sheets of instructions, and we have two metal sheets. Let's put those to the side. Find the first piece of paper and open it up. And it's it's a Metal Earth kit. It's the same, it's just exclusively sold through Disney because that's the kind of thing they would do, which is fine. Now, we've got the usual Metal Earth 3D Metal Model Kit with the same line drawing, the same bit about insertion holes, fold lines, insertion tabs, the bit about needle nose pliers, the legend as they begin to put this on pretty much every kit so far, or lately. E points in the grave side of a sheet, any points at the non-engraved side of a piece or a sheet and the tension point is trying to get your attention to make sure it, it could be a very variable of things it might have words with it to say make sure you do this it could just be saying make sure that this tab goes in this slot this arrow points that way it's just trying to draw your attention to something important the what I used to refer to as legend the blue circle means to insert a tab and fold it over 90 degrees and the green triangle means to insert tab and twist 90 degrees and a little note here if you pull and twist the tab it does make it more secure and down at the bottom we have our metal sheets and we have the layout of the sheets we have the numbers telling you which one is which part so you can find them on the associated sheet we have a few items that are the same color which indicate these are the same part. It may just be numbered one time and you have to find that color to find the other part. Oftentimes with duplicate parts where it's left and right is the same. Sometimes it's four, five, six parts. But that's, I'm glad that they do that now. It helps to find those parts much easier, much more confidently. If we move over to page two, we have the start of the assembly flowchart with part one and the E pointing to which side is engraved and how to fold it. And then down here, you flip, fold this up, flip it over, and keep going. Once you're at the bottom, jump over, flip over to page three, and follow the arrows. They kind of zigzag here. Slide over to page three, or four. Continue on, building, shaping, and constructing the parts. Once you're done with page one, or the first sheet, page four, you open up the next sheet, and you will find inside page 5 and 6. Page 5. Continue following the directions. We have this green part, so there's more than one green part, purple one. We have indicating the non-engraved side. And keep on at the bottom, move over to page 5. And then 6 in the back, or... Hmm. I'm sorry. We were on page 5. Move over to page 6. Flip on the back. Page 7 and page 8. And then at the bottom you will have your completed kit. Let's talk tools. I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build. I have needle nose pliers. I have flat nose pliers. I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, 
a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. Also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits, and I use them a lot. When it comes to shape and rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. Some sort of hook and pick set can be handy. I like this very small dental style pick. Sometimes you have to pull things out of areas too small for fingers. These Kelly clamps or hemostats, I've heard them called several names, can be used to hold on to small parts while guiding them into place. They lock so they won't let go. I do not use them much because they have teeth and you can scratch the part, but sometimes my hands are just too small. Metal sheets, instructions, some tools, let's put this together. I started out at the wrong fold, but thankfully I noticed quick and was able to correct it easily. I had such a difficult time getting the tabs on part 2 to line up, at least on the one side.
Parts 4 and 5 are very odd fitting pieces. They bend in strange ways. Thank you.
These little cones were so small that even the ring pliers were too large. I believe the instructions say to bend the tabs over here, but the part is not really stable enough. I ended up twisting them instead. This video has been edited down. I've not shown all the different attempts, adjustments, or retries of this build. I also clip out parts where I am studying directions, searching for and clipping parts, and sometimes repetitive steps. It may make this kit look like it comes together easier than it did, but there are a lot of bending and adjusting of parts to make things fit. Work slowly, be patient, and take your time.
I rather wish I could show you more of the little cone piece and how I shape them, but they are so small and my fingers are so big. It's difficult sometimes for me to see what I'm doing. The tabs on 34 and 35 had no fold lines and need to be bent as close to the edge of the center piece as possible. These kind of tabs are difficult to bend just right so that they line up properly. I fought with part 35 for over 5 minutes just trying to get the tabs into the slot. There was not enough room to get to the tabs near the body that held the bottom half of the engine on. I had to bend the engine down a little just to sort of get to them. I had to squeeze the tabs in a little bit to fit the back part on.
present the land speeder. This kit towards the end did not go as I had hoped. It was frustrating. I expected there to be some trouble with getting these engines because of the shape of them. I thought I've got enough experience now it won't be that hard but this one in particular just it did not want to do right. It, I don't like the way it looks. Uh, it's rough looking. At some point maybe I'll try to do it again but this is not going to be high up on the list of ones that I want to give another try to. The two engines on the side don't sit the same and I'm really not sure what else I can do without breaking it to get them the same. It just it's very weird how these engines come together. It's very strange they all kind of come together in different ways. These side pieces were difficult, far more difficult to get on than I would have thought, at least one of them. It's almost like things didn't want to quite line up in some areas. It makes me wonder, this is a Disney exclusive, right now anyway, you can only get them through the Disney Park stores. I don't know that that's ever going to change, but it makes me wonder if Fascinations did this and went, we don't like, really like the way this turned out. It's got some really weird problems. And Disney said, we want exclusive kits. Oh, here you go. <laughs> I don't know if that's the truth, but it makes me wonder. Because some of their kits can be troubling. But this one, I don't know, just something about it. Just, it's like it, it didn't want to come together. If you're a diehard fan like me and you got them, have them all. Do it. Be careful. Watch the video. Trying to learn from some of my mistakes. If... You're not that excited about it don't do it don't do it it's trouble to get it it's more expensive if you're not going to a disney park you have to order it and you're talking about shipping it's a pain to put together and i don't think it looks all that great for what it is it's it's okay that's just my opinion and it did end up taking almost four hours to put together so it was a rather long kit just because I had to redo and retry and fight with so many things. I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.